I purchased my very first car just over a year ago from today, my lovely little Renault Clio. Now, once I understood what kind of car I wanted to go for, actually figuring out how to pay for the car was a whole different ball game, as there's quite a lot of options available to us here in the UK. I've broken down the five ways that you can actually buy a car here in the UK. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. Pow. So the first option is that you buy a car with your savings. Now, if you are very serious about growing your wealth and personal finance in general, and you're not in any rush to buy a car, then you should know that this is really the only option that you should consider when buying a car. Cool, let's leave it there. <laughs> only kidding, somewhat, but yes, ideally if you want to buy a car for the long term, using money that you have saved over time is the general way to go. And that is because for the most part, the other options do require some financing. And that typically means that you will have to pay some extra money in the long term towards interest. And ideally, that's not what we want to be doing. But I totally understand that this may not be an option for many, particularly when cars are an absolute necessity in your day to day life. But I will suggest that if you are deciding to use any of the following financing options, please put down at the biggest deposit possible. That way you you're relying less on the financing aspect. Please make sure that if you are buying a car using your savings that you do have money left over to cover any short term costs. Let's not forget our emergency fund. So the first pro is that this method doesn't require you to get a loan. That means you will not be losing any money towards interest, nor do you owe anyone any money. And the second benefit is that you will own the car outright as soon as you purchase it. Looking at the cons, obviously the first one out of the bag is that it does require higher capital from your savings to do this method, which might not obviously be accessible to everyone. The second con is that the car could depreciate in value. This means that the car is likely to be worth less when it comes to resale. Now the third kind of con is that obviously you are limited in your car choices because it is dependent on how much money that you have. Um, I am going to put it here because I do want to be objective, but obviously I am a personal finance channel, so I do have to discourage purchasing items that are outside of your means, particularly if that item is a depreciating asset like a car. Did you know that on average a car loses half of its value within the first three years? Now from this step onwards, any options that I do mention will be a financing option, which means that your credit score will determine the type of deal that you can obtain. Obviously, the better the score that you have, the better the deal that you're likely going to get. Do check out my earlier video where I walk you through how to check and improve your credit score. And please do be aware that any missed payments from any of the following methods will negatively impact your credit score. So the second option is something called higher purchase, which essentially means that you're going to be getting a loan to buy the car. However, this loan is secured against your car, which means that until you've paid off the loan, the car technically isn't yours. It is a bit like getting a mortgage, but instead of buying a house, you're getting a car. You will likely need to pay down a deposit and the minimum requirements are typically between 10 to 20%, and then you'll make fixed monthly repayments over a specific time period. Now remember, this is a loan, so interest will be added to your monthly repayments. However, unlike the next option that I'm about to mention shortly, there is no lump sum payment required at the end of your contract. Higher purchases are usually arranged at the car dealership, making it super convenient for you to organize. However, most deals are against new cars, which means there is less competitive deals for used cars. So this option might not be the best for you if you're looking to buy a used car. So looking at the pros, the first one being is that the car will be yours at the end of your contract, assuming that you have fulfilled all your monthly repayments. The second pro is that you don't need much capital to get a car using this option. You typically need to get a deposit between 10 to 20% of the car value. And finally, unlike other financing options, this doesn't have any mileage restrictions. Now looking at the cons, the first one being is that you don't own the car until you make your final payment. So if you do miss a payment, you can actually have your car repossessed. And the third con is that it may not be ideal if you want to buy a secondhand car, because I did mention that the best deals are typically against new cars and deals with higher interest rates 
are typically against used cars. So again, me putting my personal finance hat on, if you do require financing to actually buy a car, do you really think buying a new car is the best option? Remember, cars are likely to depreciate in value after you've used them, and we want to be limiting the amount of interest that we are losing to these loans, and buying a new car is typically more expensive than a used car. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe with the notification bell on. I release a video every single week talking about all things personal finance with the ultimate aim of helping you be better with your money. Now, the third option is something called personal contract purchase, or PCP for short. Now, again, this is another type of car financing. However, it's probably the most unusual one on this list. Now, the way that it works is that instead of getting a loan to cover the full cost of the car, you instead get a loan for the difference between the cost of the car when it's brand new and the predicted value of the car at the end of your contract. Now, the predicted value will be forecasted based on your annual mileage over your term agreement. Then when it comes to the end of your contract, you do have a few options. The first one being is that you can trade in the car for another car and start the whole process again. The second option is that you can hand the car back to the dealer and pay nothing. Third option is, is that you pay a lump sum payment known as a balloon payment and you get to keep the car. Please note though that this balloon payment will be significantly higher than your monthly repayments. Now that was all a bit confusing, so let me give an example to better demonstrate this. So let's say you sign up to PCP for three years and the cost of the car is £10,000 and the dealership have predicted that the car value will be £5,000 at the end of three years. So this is what will happen. So first off, you will need to put down a deposit. Typically, the minimum requirement is around the 10% range. So let's say for this example, it is 10%. 10% of 10,000 is 1,000 pounds, and I put down 1,000 pounds as a deposit. This means that I now owe 9,000 pounds back to the lender. But remember, it has been agreed that the car will be worth 5,000 pounds after three years, and it is the difference between these two numbers that I will have to repay back. So that is 9,000 pounds take away from 5,000 pounds. That leaves me with 4,000 pounds that I'll need to repay back to the lender over the course of my monthly repayments. Now, of course, this is a loan, so interest will be calculated and factored in into your monthly repayments. But the catch is, is that the interest is going to be calculated based on the nine grand value, not the 4,000 pounds that you need to pay back. And then finally, once the three years is up, I can either choose to pay back the 5,000 pounds, this is the balloon payment that I mentioned earlier, and keep the car to myself, or I can give the car back and pay nothing whatsoever. So looking at the pros for PCP, the first one being is that compared to the other types of financing, PCP generally has the lowest monthly repayments. And the second pro is that, of course, you don't need much capital to get started. Again, like with the higher purchase, you typically need a deposit of between 10 to 20 percent. The third pro is that you do have flexibility at the end of your contract to decide what you want to do with the car. If you do decide to give back the car, then you don't have to worry about the depreciation in the car's value. And the final pro is that this option can be ideal for someone that is looking to change cars every few years. But again, putting my personal finance hat on, if you are someone that is looking to build out their wealth, then really changing cars every two to three years or whatever really isn't ideal. We should be looking at buying a car for the longest term possible because cars are expensive and they can drain your wealth quite substantially, particularly at the beginning period where it is probably the most crucial part in your personal finance journey. Looking at the cons, as the predicted price is based on your annual mileage, if you do go above this mileage, you may be subject to additional fees. Also, if there are any imperfections on the car during this period, like scratches, any form of damage, then you will likely have to pay an additional charge, particularly if you want to give the car back. And the final con is that although the initial monthly repayments are typically lower than the other types of car financing, if you do want to keep the car because you do have to pay this balloon payment, this typically means that PCP actually tends to be more expensive in the long run compared to other types of car financing. Now the fourth option is leasing or personal contract hire. Now with this option, you will never actually own the car. This is essentially a long-term car rental agreement. 
similar to how I compared higher purchases to getting a mortgage, a PCH is like renting a house or a flat. So during this contract, you simply pay the dealer a fixed monthly amount to pay for the car. Now the payment that you make does have service and maintenance included, but you do have to stick to an agreed mileage. And at the end of the agreement, you give the car back to the dealer. Now leasing usually has higher monthly costs compared to the other financing options. However, it might work out cheaper because your payments do include service and maintenance costs. So looking at the pros on this one, so the first one being is that your monthly repayments do cover the cost of servicing and maintenance. The second pro is that you don't need much capital to get started. Like with the other financing options, you typically need a deposit between 10 to 20%. However, I have seen some leasing deals where they don't require a deposit from you at all. However, this usually results in a much higher monthly cost. And the next pro is that this can be an ideal option for someone that just needs a car for a short term period. And then finally, because the car is never yours, you don't have to worry about the car's depreciation in value. Now looking at the cons, the first one being is that your monthly repayments are typically higher compared to other car financing options. You may be liable for extra costs if you exceed the agreed mileage limit or if you want to end the agreement earlier. The car also has to be in a sellable condition when you return it, otherwise additional charges may apply too. And then the final con is that you can actually spend a lot of money on leasing and it makes you wonder, is it actually worth it if the car is never actually yours. And then the fifth and final option is getting a personal loan. Now you can actually get a personal loan from your bank, a building society or another financial lender. Now your credit rating will significantly determine the quality of the loan and the amount of loan that you can actually borrow. There are other factors but credit ratings is the crucial one. Typically, personal loans let you spread out the cost between one to seven years. So it is really, really important that you do shop around to make sure that you are getting the best APR rate because obviously the lower the rate is, the less money that you pay back in interest and other charges. So unlike the other types of financing, you will have to spend a bit of your own time figuring out how much you actually need to borrow. You don't want to risk under or over borrowing on a loan. I would also suggest that you do find loan deals where you aren't limited on overpaying or paying back the loan earlier just to give you some flexibility to try and avoid paying too much in interest rate charges, especially if you don't manage to secure a good deal. Remember this loan doesn't have to fund the whole cost of the car, so I would encourage you to get as much of your savings towards that car as possible and then any deficit you can fund with this personal loan. So looking at the pros for this one, so the first one being is that because this is effectively a cash loan, the money that you get from this personal loan towards the car means that you effectively own the car outright at the time of purchase. The second pro is that there is no restriction to mileage limits like the other types of financing. And if your credit rating is particularly good, this is probably going to be the cheapest alternative to actually getting a car next to cash. You also have flexibility in how much you actually want to borrow. Plus these loans are generally quick and easy to get set up. You can do it on the phone, in person or online. Now looking at the cons, the first one being is that this option may not be viable to everyone, particularly those that do have low credit ratings. And then the second con is that the car value could depreciate so the car will be worth less at resale. Cool, so that is all of the main ways that you can actually purchase a car here in the UK. Please do let me know in the comment section down below if you do have any thoughts or any further comments. I would love to hear from you all. And please do give this video a massive thumbs up. That does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of my YouTube channel. And remember, I release a video every single week. So if you wanna keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button too. See you later, bye.